Today we're going to talk about tips to write a good lab procedure. This is an example of technical writing. Uh, the advantage of doing this with the flipped classroom lecture is that you can stop the presentation to have enough time to write or you can replay parts that you'd like to listen to again. Technical writing is basically writing instructions for someone else to follow. The keys to good technical writing is that it's clear, it's concise, and concise means short. So you're trying to use as few words as possible to still thoroughly explain what you're talking about. This is unlike an essay you would write for English where you're often trying to be very descriptive and, and add more words. Technical writing also sometimes involves illustrations and you can use uh, a picture with your instructions if that would be helpful. Think about uh, directions to assemble something at home as examples of the kind of technical writing that you're going to do. You should also know that good technical writing is hard. It's hard to clearly explain with a few words what you want someone to do and for them to understand that. This is an example of a lab procedure I would give you and it's an example of technical writing. And we'll come back to this a couple more times looking for the kinds of tips that I've given you. This is where you should write some things down on a piece of paper so that you can have these guidelines to use when you write your instructions. Tip number one is that we write these as steps and not a paragraph and that we use numbers to indicate which step follows which one. So number your steps. Secondly, you start each step with a verb, something that tells the user what they're supposed to do. Cut, measure, mix, watch, count, words like that. The third tip I have for you is to avoid words like next to this or you because those words are implied. We know the person is the person following the instructions so we don't have to say you. We know that step four comes after step three so we don't have to add words like next. As we look at our example that I gave you, you'll notice that the steps are numbered I don't know why step number three is smaller, and that each word uh, or each statement starts with an action word. Label, measure, take, place, observe, clean up. The next thing you want to do after you've written your instructions is reread them and see if they're clear enough so that people would know what to do. Please write down enough detail so that different people reading the directions would do the same thing. And then are the steps that you've given the person to do in a logical order? So again, please write down logical order. In terms of detailed instructions, these are some of the things you want to think of. So please write down detailed instructions and then write down these three points. So is there an object or tool that you want them to use? If they're measuring or, or, or adding something, how much do you want them to add? Where will they find it? And into what piece of equipment does it go? So here's my example. Again, here's my verb to say, here's what I want you to measure. Here is what you're measuring. Here's how much. Again, yeah, there's another how much. What tools should you use to measure it with? Lastly, if you think um, a picture will help, you're going to add that. And you want to make sure that your procedure is a controlled experiment. So are all of the, the examples in your experiment treated fairly? And how have you made sure that that is true? Again, the underlying things I underline you should write down. Uh, what data do you want collected? And in our case, tomorrow we're working with tinfoil boats. Um, do you instruct the person to repeat the experiment 
with the other boat. What steps do you want them to repeat?